Welcome back to the Audio Lag Show. I'm with Dr. Drew Pinsky having a, a good conversation. It's good to, <laughs> like I said, he knew me uh, at the bottom. and it's. Uh, I, I am so pleased to see you. <laughs> no, 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 no kidding. It's, I never it's, thought it, a day. It warms uh, my chest. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And I, again, I never thought I, I'd be back on, on this level in a you, place you, like this. Let me, let me say this for everybody to hear. You deserve this. <laughs> don't feel you. guilty about it. You are a great <laughs> talent. Anybody disagree with me? You already deserves this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they're well paid. We miss you. No, we miss you when you're not. When no, you're I, not I, mean, I, I mean, it means a lot. But I, you know, I talk, I, I see guys that, you know, you were involved with. I mean, Dennis Rodman. I mean, right. I mean, he's a guy I got to know a little bit too. Talk about a sensitive guy. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm and, glad you and, said that. Yeah. I mean, and, and, I, and a nice guy. And I got guy to too. like Dennis. But, I do too. But he's he's out there. Describe he's out there. what you feel about. Well, his I, it's not what I, I feel. Only good things about right. him. I, I I met his mom. She's uh, lovely. Shirley. She's fantastic. Right. She doesn't understand why he's detached from from the family and stuff. Uh -huh. He he did two <laughs> things I'll never forget. Right. One is he goes, um, you, you you and I'll have to have we, we'll have a relationship, but you have to keep working on it. Oh god, and, and we yeah. did, and we it's worked, hard, and yeah. we, we developed one. And then when I first got going with him, he goes, you like this? He goes, um, he goes, listen, there's something you got to get used to. There's God. And then there's professional athletes. And you just got to get used to that. And I, and I, thought, uh -oh. I thought, wow, okay. Well, well he's well adjusted. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> but in the course of treatment, you know, he's a really serious alcoholic. Dentist, right, right. And we did a brain scan on him. We have it, we put it on TV. I mean, he allowed us to do this. Yeah. And the scan showed significant alcohol damage in his cortex. Oh, wow. And, and wow. The, the psychiatrist that did the scan sat him down and said, you're going to get dementia if you keep this up. Uh -huh. Then he wow. also had this very, very strange finding of shutdown in his temporal lobes, this part of the brain here, bilaterally shut down and, and hyper-functioning in his frontal lobes. So he has, he, that would cause someone to sort of lose the ability to, to understand the social valences. Uh -huh. He wouldn't understand sort of if things ebb and flow in a social setting. Okay. But he can focus like crazy on any one thing, like right. rebounding. Okay. Or, you know, right, 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 right. And so it's, it's interesting, but he, he dismissed it. He was like, you know, he goes, all right, well, whatever. And he just sort of blew wow. it off. Are yeah. you talking about, like, when you say the dementia from drinking, I was in someone, a woman in rehab in, in Florida. Yeah. So is that kind of like wet brain? Is that what that is? When wet, no, that? Wet, wet brain means your brain is dysfunctional because of the alcohol. It may return. You're just uh -huh. ha you have an injured brain, and okay. it could all return. It, you're at risk for dementia with a wet brain, particularly if you have certain features. But wet brain is different than, than alcohol dementia. Well, it was scary. This woman who had it, they had, we were right on the intercoastal, this... Uh, uh, this rehab, and you can walk into the water, and then she almost walked into the mm -hmm. the intercoastal mm -hmm. one night, and you know, it was it was pretty sad. You know? So alcohol dementia cannot be reversed. Is that the, the, you know, right, okay, right. So once you once injure your brain, once once you've lost, once you cross a certain threshold, that's it. Really, and there's different kinds of it too. There's a Korsakoff syndrome, and this. Well, you know, they global used to dimensions. say that you know you can't uh, that that when you kill brain cells, you that that's it. But and, and now, now that's not true. Yeah. That, that is not, not true. true. I, as I as I think of it, it, it seems like there's a threshold that once you pass, there's no turning back. Okay. But there's there's things that can be done before you cross that threshold. That's my sense of it. I, right. I, don't, I don't. I can't quote literature on that. But that's how I've experienced right. it. It's not, it sounds like a lot of you know between the you know the alcohol being the worst with the withdrawals yeah. and we're talking about dementia. Stuff, that, such that, a, that, it's, that, such a, it's such a happy topic. Where I'm no, I'm just saying. I'm I'm, 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 I'm hearing two show <laughs> hearing televisions click off all over the country. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, uh, it's important. Booze yeah. is uh, booze. Do you think it's as bad as like cocaine? I mean, do you think it should be up there with? It should it be illegal? Like well, these other drugs? It, it, it sounds I, like it's damaging I, as hell. I mean. You would be surprised to know about me that uh, people think I'm like the buzzkill guy. Like, uh, like I, I am not. If people want to use substances, God bless them. No, I, right. I, yeah. I, I understand. So I, and I don't think prohibition of anything really works. Right. I, I, I think if we want it to be pot to be legal, that well, that the people decide that. Now, I agree. Well, it doesn't matter. If you're it, not doing heroin well, now, if it, you get heroin up the street, it, a lot of it people It matters. It, it helps me when a drug is illegal help patients when I can create consequences. Right. That helps me. So, Absolutely. But, but but that's up to me to decide whether the law should be there or not. That's up to the system, our people. Our, In a know. way, you're right. Consequences, you got to make people understand. Some people don't understand physical consequences. Maybe you can say right. the, the financial consequences right. that could happen. But in a lot life. of people, a lot of people find sobriety when they lose their freedom. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah, so, uh, people get sober in jail yeah, and whatever. Do. And that's great. The, the laws help them. But to, to be to moralize about drug addiction is a foolish thing. I hope the Philip Seymour Hoffman situation at least brings that out. Right. It's foolish to be to moralize about drug use. It's it ridiculous. doesn't work. Yeah. The, the people people, want to, it's free country. People want to use right. right. What about? I mean, like, what was a big thing they call it? Emotional using. 
Yeah, you know, like what, I'm not too know, much of a fan of that. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you like? In other words, what I'm saying is, a, a woman breaks your heart, you drink. A guy yeah. gets you mad right. on the plane. You get to the hotel and you go, I got, I got to need a shot. Right. So, you know? so some people don't. We don't think about this much, but but how we regulate our emotions is a very complex process. I'm actually giving a whole. I'm working at a conference on this in later in March. Right. But it, it, how we build emotional regulation is we know how to do that now. We know what the biology is. We know what the interpersonal processes are. We know what the brain mechanisms are. Right. It's not talked about. Our culture doesn't really understand that. So people that have poor emotional regulation are looking to regulate themselves any way they can. And the culture here offers things outside of their body to help them regulate right. the substance. Absolutely. And, and guess what? If you're if you have a genetics of addiction, it works very well. Uh, it works, and sure. that, that's why people start in the first place. So so Your people, problems go away for a little while. And yeah. so people that look at addicts go, well, why do you? Okay, it's a disease once you lose control, but why did you use in the first place? That's why people use in the first place. Yeah, a lot of times, and then, and then they get hooked, and then they're using. And now, the, it's not it, emotional; it, it, it it's have, just because they're hooked. Have, and, well, now they have the emotional dysregulation, and they're addicted. They have both problems now. What are your thoughts about these uh, drugs like Suboxone and stuff? Uh, I'm, I'm not I, a huge fan. It saves lives. I, it does, but I but. But how long? Like, like I of course, typical me. It, it saved me. Uh, from uh, being sued because I wasn't going to be able to make a movie because I was on dope and I got, was able to get out of it. But I stayed on it for four years. Well, it's, it's a, it, well, <laughs> well, but, but maybe during that time it saved your life. Yeah. So that that to me is a perfect use of it. It's a temporizing measure. It's not a. But then you can solution. abuse it. Oh, I have lots of people that use it. Right. And I'm worried that Philip Seymour Hoffman was yeah, on that. Well, that's what and, happens. Because if you combine it in the right time frame, oof. that happened to me once. That's why I missed the. the my friend Bob Saget was getting roasted for Comedy Central the day I was flying out there. I was messed up, and I mixed. I I did lines of heroin four hours after I had sixty milligrams of Suboxone, oh. and I tell you what, I turned green. Oh. I was like, I, it was the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. I mean, I thought I was dying. Why does that yeah. happen? What Suboxone does? What? Suboxone is a partial agonist antagonist. It, it, it's, it changes the way the receptors function in the brain for the opioids and the opiates, and it, in a way, it's a good thing. And it's a way, it's not right. And it, well, it takes your, your, your withdrawals away. Yeah, it allows you to function. Yep. But what people do, what I started doing was, I, I said, okay, I'm using it as a crutch. Yeah. I, I, I can stop the withdrawals and function, and then 12 hours later, I can have a good time. Right, again. right. And, you know? Artie, this is no judge. People are going to understand what I'm about to say. This is no judgment of addicts, but you'll get what I'm about to say. Right. Is that the biggest, biggest problem that people that do research on this stuff and that treat patients with this kind of thing do is they believe the patients. Right, right. Addiction makes you lie. Oh, I lie. All the time. Lie like crazy. And if you, if you don't understand that your job is to figure out the lies and, and, and to what's really going on, you just believe the patient. They're using. They're using all kinds of stuff. Right. Yeah. They're not going to tell you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. That's exactly. Of course not. Because it's real content. Like what? Like people would say, uh, you lied to Howard. I said, what am I going to tell my boss? I'm doing heroin. I mean, you know, it doesn't make no, any if, sense. If my patients did not lie to me. There's some. They don't have the right. Then their diagnosis is in question. There's an easy they, way they, though. They lie all the time. There's an easy way, and a lot of corporations there's legal issues. And stuff, but you just drug test people, and you know, you'll know. But. That a lot of people are afraid of that, you know. Well, I, it was funny when I was talking about Philip Seymour Hoffman. Somebody twittered me, "Show me one long-term study that suggests that long-term opiate addiction, opiate abstinence, is a realistic goal." Right. And I was like, "Oh, for God's sakes! All the studies are confusing <laughs> and messed up." I, I, I could say I know many, many, many flourishing, wonderful formula. Philip Seymour Hoffman was, was an well, example. Exactly, of that. the guy, you know. I, that's why I believe the pills. Going again, yeah, well, well, they found program. a lot of those maintenance things, like like not Suboxone, but something. What Buprenorphine. was the other one? Uh, is that the same but but I think he was using that all for withdrawal. I think he was detoxing himself. Right. I think that's what's happening. And and how dangerous is that? People trying to detox yourself. I mean, it's possible, but <laughs> it's, 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 it's yeah. I I you know it, it's for me. You know, I used, I did twenty years of, of running a, a chemical dependency unit in a psychiatric hospital. So we yeah. had the six 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 of the six. We we dealt with the ones that everyone else did. How long did you do that for? Twenty years. Oh my god. Twenty years. Oh, all right. And. Um, um, and I would, I just wouldn't do opiate addic opiate withdrawal as an outpatient ever. Really, I, I just you got doesn't come make in. any sense. It just, it just right. it, it, you can't. They're they're lying, distorting. Yeah, you know yeah. what's going on. You're out there yeah. in the real world where you can manipulate things. And, and not only that, but just putting an opiate addict in withdrawal in in four walls right. with, with a supportive staff. Their withdrawal symptoms settle down just with that. Yeah, really? which I always thought was fascinating. You're right because there's sort of you know that happened to me. Yeah, you sort of get like okay. You know what? I'm not running anymore. I'm a little more relaxed. The, the and I feel safe. The desperation settles. And desperation yeah. is one of the big features of opioid withdrawal that people ignore. 
It's and anxiety about. makes the yeah. anxiety for me uh, makes the, it go up ten times. Sure. The, the the withdrawals because if I think withdrawals are coming on, I don't have anything around me to help get rid of them, and I gotta go on a talk show. Right. Forget about right. it. And then if I cancel the talk show, as soon as I find out, okay, you can move our schedule, no problem. Immediately, I feel better physically, even though I don't have any stuff in me. You right. Know? It's odd. Right. Uh, can you stick around another? Yeah, yeah, I'm oh, good, yeah, I'm good. I feel bad. You're sick, but no, uh, I, let's say I'm still on Pacific time, so for me, it's like eight thirty in the evening. All right, so let's go a couple more questions. Yeah. Doctor Drew Pinsky and uh, is with us. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Talking with Doctor Drew Pinsky. During the commercial, we were talking about Justin Bieber, and uh, you know, uh, again, my theory with him is, you know, I think he has the genetics for it, uh, but for he, addiction, yeah, for addiction. His real problem is, I think. The one, what's the one thing he lacks in the the hip hop world, the music world, is street cred. Yeah, that thing of street cred. He I seems think, to want that. I think, think he wants that badly. Yeah. and the way he's doing it is like, yeah, I'm getting coke, and I'm right. And I think uh, he's, he's not going to stop till he does. And now, what else is street cred? A jail sentence. Like, yeah, it's the most retarded way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, would you think that's a possibility? Oh no, I do. Yeah. I mean, the big question with him. I apologize to your audience for my voice. I've got this bronchitis thing. Don't but, worry about it. But. Um, the, the question with him is he just, you know, developmentally, he didn't have the usual milestones as the rest of us. Right. He's got too much money and power. Or is this really addiction? Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. Right. Both. But that's, that's a that, deadly combination. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that that's kind of like what Miley Cyrus is, is no, doing? No. Miley Cyrus is not an addict, in my, in my opinion. No. No. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, no. Well, did she no. ever have issues? No. I, I thought that, that yeah. there were there were drugs. Uh, she used. Which it, that, that seemed. There's, right. there's using and then there's and addiction. There's a, well, there's, she's, not Lindsay, you are <laughs> convinced. she's not, not Lindsay Lohan. She's not Lindsay Lohan. She's not Lindsay You're convinced that I'm she's convinced Miley's not an act. No, no. Wow. I think Miley, Miley is straight up uh, pushing limits and boundaries and yeah. all that kind of stuff. How uh, yeah. How is Lindsay Lohan? Is she someone you know? You don't know her. Is she someone you probably desperately want to help no, out? Right? No, I, I kind of don't. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. If she wanted to reach out. Well, I, I got to that point with Dr. Drew once. I was a typical addict. I made every wrong, typical cynical crap on, on the Stern show. I would say, you know, he doesn't really want to help me, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you had to say on a talk show once where I wasn't there, look, I won't treat him right now. And you were right for it. You were right in saying that. But, uh, you know, eventually I, tur I turned around. It's the one thing I hate when people... Um, you know, challenge your uh, validity because I will. I, I the, the one thing I will say to people: you you really uh, are a good man, well, and, and, and I appreciate I appreciate your help, and uh, I, I hope people will realize yeah, it means, that. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to me because I because I, I <laughs> why do we do all that? You know, yeah. Try to make a difference. Try to do something good. Try to have a little fun. Try to make good. And people want to take you down. You know, like you say, it's a cynical world. We, you, you know, I was listening to you being interviewed on Howard after I left, and you said something. You, uh, Howard played like a Van Halen song. You didn't. Re re and Howard said, "You don't know this Van Halen song." And you said, "Howard, you got to understand. For yeah. seven years, yeah. I, my face was in a book. Not just a book. And, I was in a hospital. Right. It was like I was dead. And that's people, what a people doctor. Make fun of that's me. what a doctor has to go through. Yeah. No, you're you. You got to you got to leave the world. From that's right. Right. From like nineteen, I, the first couple years of medical school, you're like you're still in the world and stuff, and then right. you hit the wards, and then you vanish. Yeah. You do. You just in this hospital. The only only, only <laughs> for about till about, 19, about 1983 to 1992, the only contact I had with culture was the television <laughs> in the patients' rooms. Oh God! Which occasionally I would see <laughs> whatever they something. like. Yeah. Whatever they like. Right. Well, a little talk show or something. Yeah. I kind of kind of knew what was going on, but I'd see a movie every six months or something, and that was it. And well, radio driving in, and that was that. Well, my wow. my, my fiance yeah. is also a big fan of you. She's 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 brilliant. She studied at Oxford, and she's, wow. She uh, she tried pre med classes for a while. And uh, she was getting all A's and stuff, but she was smart enough to realize I don't have it in me to be a doctor. Yeah, you gotta want to do. I'm that. not the the kind of personality there. I I don't want to disappear, you know. Yeah. But she, you know, it wasn't the intelligence. It was just like uh, she. I I I'm not that kind and, of person. And, and her father's a doctor, and you could tell he is that kind of person. Well, he you know? probably discouraged her too, because these days it's painful to practice medicine. It really is very difficult, particularly you, to do it well. Your malpractice insurance. Because malpractice. You have no time. The system is. It's a big bureaucracy. Less, People are gonna sue you. I can as well, right? Yeah. With the socialism of medicine, well, the, the, I mean, it's less I, and less lucrative it, for the time. Well, that you're the in. money's out, and at least for the real doctoring, you know what I mean. If you're yeah. a sub super special surgeon or something, those guys make a lot of money. You know, but, John brings up a good point. No yeah. one ever asks you this. What do you feel about Obamacare? I don't know. You want to get political? I, I, no, I, I, as a doctor, I, what do you feel about it? I, it's. I'm okay with it. I, 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 here's my thing: that we needed to do something. 
And I think when the day is done, it will actually kind of work out okay. Why do we need but to do something? What were the major problems with it? <laughs> the, the system was such a patchwork. We, we had, people didn't understand we had it better than people, than the PR. I right. Because everybody got care. It's just the way they got care was cumbersome and people are afraid to get in and the systems were very inefficient. And there's, there's a better way to do it. All the other countries do it. Why can't we? Okay. And 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 people need access. They need care. It's it just, it's sort of... The, the problem's going to be, and they're going to have to get used to this, is you're going to be seeing less and less doctors and more and more physician extenders, we call them. Right. I, I used the word physician extenders on Anderson Cooper the other night, and they all went, Phys what? physician <laughs> extenders? That's disgusting. I go, oh, no, you better get used to it. It's going to be physician's assistants <laughs> okay, and nurses, yeah. and, and that's okay. I mean, right. a lot of stuff they can yeah. handle. And uh, yeah, You're right. It can't be unless you get the wrong person. You know, but, I, I just think when the day is done, it, it's going to be a – it's going to – we're not going to like a lot of it, but I think when it all washes out, we're going to kind of move in a positive direction. Okay, good. I, I, I mean, wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have asked for it. Right. I don't. It wasn't. I wasn't happy with it when it passed. Yeah. I'm certainly not pay, happy paying the taxes on it every right. year. I'm really not happy about that. But I think for people, there will be a net. Benefit. So it's going to take time. We got to be patient. But I'm, I think I'm it's not gonna... happy about it. Right. I, think it I hear you. Yeah. It's going to work out in time. Yeah. yeah. Moving on to another policy oriented thing with the, with all the legalization of yeah. marijuana going yeah. on. I mean, I, you know, I remember when I was in college listening to Loveline, uh, hearing the, the gateway <laughs> drug <laughs> concept, uh, it's not I'm a gateway saying, drug. Just saying, that's well, I don't understand. It's, it's, it's not a gateway drug. Here's explain that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, back in the day, if somebody died of heroin, yeah. you know, it, they started with pot, alcohol, cocaine. Okay. That doesn't happen anymore. Right. Well, a little bit. That was my route, I hate yeah. to say. Well, that's, that was uh, the day. Uh, now right. it's pills, heroin. Yeah. They, they skip over uh, the illicit drugs. So the gateway has totally changed right yeah. now. Uh, pot, it, it sort of, people that love it, you guys all know some of the people that love it. Oh, right. God. I know. And again, functioning people <laughs> who are oh, sure. creative uh, writers, they can't live without it. They yeah. love it. Yeah. More than it. And it, it does activate that part of the brain, the anterior cingulate and things. And, and the cannabinoid system is is... He can, in some people with certain genetic backgrounds, set up this, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Can it help creativity, you think? Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't really comment on right, that. But right. but I do know that in almost every case, that incredible, oh, my God, from it wears off. That's the and problem. That's the, then that's and then the then problem. you chase it. Where do I yeah. get that? Maybe heroin will help me well, get that. Or if methamphetamine, because yeah. it, that corrects the kind okay. of depression. And people don't want to talk about that. I, I, and I, Listen, I don't begrudge anybody using pot. I go, have at it. It's awesome. It's great. Yeah, yeah. But, but let's talk realistically about it. And whenever I mention cannabis withdrawal, which I've seen a lot of. Really? It's really unpleasant. So it exists. For some, for some A lot of people say it does. But who cares if so it exists or not? People... But just because, you know what I mean? Just because <laughs> something, who gives a, you know, because, because it is addictive and there is a withdrawal, does that mean it should be illegal? <laughs> right. No. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, so I just, let's just talk realistically about it. And not everyone's affected the same way. That's why it's kind of That's kinda the difficult. problem. Yeah. yeah. It has quite a, and well, I'll be fascinated to see what happens in Colorado and Washington. I, I'm sure more states will follow. Yeah. Yeah. But there, there may be there may be unintended negative consequences, and we'll we as physicians will deal with it. That's all. I, um, you know, again, you talk about the pills. What about these synthetic drugs or the, the bath, spices? Bath and so, oh, why whatever. do people do that? Uh, yeah. well, the reason they do it is to get around drug screening. Yeah, they, that's that's what the the allure of yeah, that is. It doesn't yeah. show up on the drug test, so I better I'm, and I can't do it without the pot, so I better do, go over to spice. Because weed is the big thing. You know, you know, you learn this as a young drug addict. Weed stays <laughs> for thirty days, blah yeah, blah blah. Yeah, can, but that can. spice stuff doesn't. It's not even detectable yet. It, it's not because it changed all the time. I don't know what spice screws is. with your head. Spi yeah, spice what is it? Supposedly, I've never tried it yeah. uh, suppose that was after my time yeah and again i was never a weed guy you yeah. know if someone had it i would but, but isn't that interesting but, but you we all know people for whom it's they go how can that not be i yeah. love this stuff yeah. it's a different biology yeah. for some people let's take uh, uh, another break we just so we can finish out the hour just a few more minutes okay you got with, it uh, doctor absolutely Drew. thank you 100 welcome back to the audio i show a couple more minutes with dr drew pinsky doc what do you got going on plug whatever you uh, need to... i've got uh, every night i'm on hln right at, uh, six o'clock nine o'clock on hln on call it's really interesting to try to we're trying to reinvent talk hook to news and it's, yeah, it's been great. very fun yeah. carol and i have a, a podcast out now at adam and dr drew show you guys are great together it's good you're still doing it's stuff. nice yeah. we're still friends and we do stuff and he's he's got a, a podcast empire there and then i do my own podcast with him and you can also check me out at podcast one awesome and um I still do you know, odds and ends and stuff, but those are the two main things I'm doing now. You know, so love line, love line on radio, and love line on radio. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, it's, a, it's, a, it's also available as a podcast. Love oh, line and podcast one. Yeah. Good, yeah. Love line's so been 25 years, 30, 32, 32 years. <laughs> 
People don't realize this. We we have a big history. In 1995, when you were going to go to television, yep. uh, it was originally going to be on Fox, not MTV. That's right. And the pilot for it, me and my two castmates from Mad TV, Orlando right. Jones and Nicole Sullivan, were your first guests no, and, ever uh, on and, the pilot. And, and, and you came on and announced that, that Mad TV had been canceled. <laughs> and, and every year, every year for nine years, or for every nine years after it's that. It's on that, 14 that, years, it lasted. I know. They, they come on every year and go, this is really it. This is, we made it this time. It's canceled. <laughs> and so, no, but yeah, yeah, it was funny i mean like that's how far back we go yeah. and i answered a phone call uh in a, in a comedic way that i thought was funny and and dr drew it wasn't helping the guy who called and dr drew just went like this <laughs> <laughs> that's how far we go back um that, that, yeah. then that went to mtv but those that's are, right those are, are the lost episodes no okay one there the were fox seven episodes ones. for fox on before fox. it got canceled and we they were back the to, first one we have no idea what happened to those episodes <laughs> um so, you know, did you, someone I, I never heard ask you, uh, someone ask you this, did you ever have an issue at all with something? No, I certainly fooled around when I was a kid and caught uh -huh. stuff like that, but. but did I, you and, try weed and stuff like that? Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and uh, but, but I never, I don't, there's not addiction in my family and it, it just didn't. Just did, didn't happen. In fact, in fact, I've never told this story. I was in college, uh, at Amherst College. Right. And I lived on a floor with a bunch of stoners. Right. And uh, they were like, you're just not doing it right. <laughs> you don't, you need to do it every day, every day and happy. That's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> you need, no, to, you still, need to do it every day. So work. what made you get a passion about, about helping it, it, people? It's, this is kind of how much time we got. A couple it, minutes. It, I, I'm an internist by training, and I was running a med right. medical service in a psychiatric hospital in addition to practicing general medicine okay. and stuff. And guess where all the medical problems were on the drug yeah. unit. And yeah. I became interested in detoxing people. That was sort of my way in. I was like, oh, I can, I can, I mean, I can help. I'd been at a county hospital for six years. Didn't No one ever taught me how to do a withdrawal in spite of treating tons of heroin addicts and alcoholics. Right. I became expert at withdrawal. People started asking me to see more people. And yeah. then I started these, seeing these people, young people who were dying, go from dying to amazing. Right. And I was like, well, the whole time while I was doing it, I was like, oh, the, the, what is that goofy 12 step stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, stuff yeah. in those rooms. Yeah. That is well, such, that's the problem. A lot of that, that's the problem. People have that. I was like, that's such no That's not medicine. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, and, and unfortunately, a lot of doctors still still exactly. look for a doctoring solution. But And and I saw these amazing recoveries. I thought, I, I want to understand this. It's oh, this the is one phenomenal. kind of disease with the proper treatment and people. It, like a fairy tale can happen almost. It's where unbelievable. You go back, right. And, yeah. when, when, and you see a few of those, you want to be a part of it. And by the way, it gives you hope for everybody. Yeah, yeah. It well, really that, gives that, you hope. That's, that's the best way yeah. uh, to get into it. And um, uh, so, and, and, and uh, you know, you got uh, three kids. They're all doing great, they're 21, right? 21. Everything's yeah. good. I've been married 20, 22 years. I think I get that right. <laughs> and we we are great. We love it. And we're having a great time. The kids are out. And yeah. uh, she has her own podcast called Calling Out. Check it out. Calling Out with Susan Pinsky. Awesome. <laughs> I will uh, again. You know, uh, you know. I know you've gone through like uh, some press where people are challenging your, oh, you. You and I, I get so mad. I just want to say, for what it's worth, I've never met a more ethical guy and a kinder guy. I, I appreciate and I, that. I, uh, yeah, you know, and it, it, I wanted to like shout from the mountaintops when I hear people do that. And you know, sometimes you get uh, people want to break you down in this country for trying to help people. It's awful, oh. you know. And I'm glad you're around. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad you are too. And yeah. I really came here, John. Nice to meet you. Nice I came, came here really to hug you and see you. I'm too bad I'm sick, but no, uh, thanks, I'm man. so 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 privileged to know you and to see all the success. It thanks, is really Doc. really yeah, wonderful. You mean a lot to me. You really do. You're a good man in my life, and I and wish get me you more fun, success. Right? And I will. I will. <laughs> Dr. Drew Pinsky back <laughs> in. The Artie Lang Show weeknights on Audience only on Directv.